These days, it can be hard to trust the media. What's true, what's fake, and who is behind the message? I'm a freelance journalist and videographer who has spent years studying the media. Now I'm taking a look at what local, regional, and national news stories mean to us here in North Central Washington. I'm Dominic Bonney, and this is Common Sense. Hello and welcome to another episode of Common Sense. I'm Dominic Bonney, and today we're going to take a look at two local examples of altruism in action. First, we're taking a look at the Chelan County Volunteer Search and Rescue Crew and how they're preparing themselves for another busy season of saving lives in the backcountry. Then we're going to learn about Westside High School's leadership program and what they're doing to raise funds for Avery Patton, a fifth grader at John Newberry Elementary in Wenatchee who is battling a rare form of pediatric ovarian cancer. She's had three major surgeries and gone through chemo multiple times and they thought they had this thing beat, but it's back and Avery and her family could use the support of our entire community right now. But before we get into those stories, I want to explore briefly the concept of altruism. Altruism is, set, is essentially selflessness. According to Wikipedia, quote, altruism is the principle and moral practice of concern for the happiness of other human beings or other animals, resulting in a quality of life, both material and spiritual. It is a traditional virtue in many cultures and a core aspect of various religious traditions and secular worldviews. Through the concept of others, toward whom concern should be directed can vary among cultures and religions, end quote. I wanted to focus for a minute on the word altruism because both of the stories I'm sharing with you in this episode are examples of it. These two snapshots of genuine selflessness right here in our community are beautiful and they are in reach for those who want to take part in both or either. First, the search and rescue volunteers who risk their own lives and limbs packing people out of sometimes very dangerous situations in the snow and sleet and rain or under the naked sun in the heat of summer. Then the educator and the student leaders who take up fundraising, this fundraising project to help ease the burden of a local family with a little one battling cancer. These are examples of altruism in action right here in our community. No one ordered them to do these things. No one is paying them. No political party is putting them up to it. No otherworldly being, spirit, or sprite is compelling them to act in these ways. These are two groups made up of individuals who each, for their own reason, decided, hey, I'm gonna do something positive for my community. It's important to remind ourselves of the beauty and self-fulfillment we feel when we find a positive way to impact our community, and that we don't need to wait for marching orders from on high. There are a million ways to make a positive impact, and this is just one. My name is Matt Cosma. I'm the president of Chelan County Volunteer Search and Rescue. We're a volunteer nonprofit group that works with both Chelan County and Douglas County Sheriff's Office to provide search and rescue services in this area. Yes. We cover both um, urban and wilderness environments um, and we're an all hazard response team so we'll do everything from lost uh, people, um, Alzheimer's walkaways, injured hikers, injured climbers, um, kids, special needs kids that wander away, things like that, and we'll handle light disaster work uh, things like the mudslides that and, and wildfire evacuations, things like that. Excellent. And can you tell me what uh, what were you, were you doing this weekend here? So this weekend was our our field skills days for our ground search and rescue teams to practice first aid skills. Um, all of our members to be a member of our group, you're required to take a Red Cross first aid CPR class. Um, but that does those classes, you know, typically just talk about heart heart attacks and. Um, the front country things that we see, and 911 is just a few minutes away. And so AED and, and CPR and call 911. And we have to take it a little further because we're in the wilderness. We're in the back country away from that initial street EMT medical care. So we have to be able to handle some other things. So um, we do have wilderness EMTs um, and wilderness first responders on our group that'll provide a little more advanced, life, advanced medical training, you know, patient care. but. Um, we want all of our members that are field qualified to take a little more training and that was this weekend was about learning how to splint learning how to do basic bleeding control apply tourniquets how to take spinal precautions and assist them EMTs or paramedics in putting a patient on a backboard or protecting their c-spine um, in one of our rescue litters that we transport people in and um, oh <laughs> bleeding control oh and then patient is bleeding control splinting uh, and then just general litter packaging. Every patient we go to, 
if they're not ambulatory, meaning they can walk out, I mean, if you broke, sprain your wrist or break a collarbone, you might be able to walk out. But if you've got an injury to your leg, you're not walking out. And so we're going to have to put you in one of our litters and, and transport you out. So uh, getting more and more familiar with pa packaging the patient based on the weather, environmental conditions, the patient's condition. Do we have to treat for hypothermia? Are they wet? Getting them in that litter and, and, and secure, ready for transport. So today was not dealing with the transport side, just getting them ready, packaged and ready for transport. We ended then in the afternoon. We did a lecture and practice patient assessment skills. Um, everything from you initially check scene safety and walk up the patient and do what we call primary assessment, which is what are, are there any life-threatening things we need to intervene in right now? You know, is there massive hemorrhage? Is there an airway issue? Is there um, a respiratory issue? Is there a circulation or bleeding issue? And then once we get through all that, you know, is there a hypothermia issue that we need to either treat or prevent? Most of our situations is preventing hypothermia in the first place. They may not be hypothermic when we get there, but it's rainy and snowy and they could get hypothermic on us if we don't keep them warm and manage them. And then we move into, you know, you know, it's going to fork into treatment and fork into um, a secondary assessment where we get more detail and, and we run through um, what their complaint is, do they have allergies, what their medications they're on are, um, you know, a physical exam, uh, you know, uh, you know, th things like that they want to get into uh, to, to do that secondary assessment. Um, you know, maybe they're great and we get that information, that's fine. Uh, maybe they decline during transport and now we have information that the hospital or the paramedics can use knowing those allergies or knowing that medication it may not matter you know thinking much about a broken ankle and we ask medic medical history and, and what a allergies they have and what medications they're on but what if they go they decline during transport now the hospital has that information sure. so we do want to collect it even on a trauma patient yeah and so this is all volunteer correct correct and, and you're a volunteer as well a volunteer yes wow and how, where does the funding for this program come from do you need support do you take absolutely. donations absolutely we need support uh, we could not do what we do without the community support uh, we are a 100 percent volunteer 100 percent um, donation funded we don't get any taxpayer dollars we don't get any funding from the sheriff's office um, we get a little bit of use of some sheriff's office equipment um, we have this truck this is a donated truck that we rebuilt um, with with dollars from our fundraisers um, we gutted the entire inside. It is up to 21st century. It is uh, computers and monitor displays. Uh, it's got three dispatch stations, the radios, and it is a wonderful resource. It is our command central, basically, we call our command post. Uh, Mobile command post, MCP, is what it stands for. And this is where we run, run the operations out of. And, you know, it, it's an expensive thing to build one of these. Uh, so that, that was funded. We, all of our equipment has been donated, either donated equipment directly or funding that we've received to purchase. And how can people get involved in this organization? Uh, get involved. Our website is ccvsar.org, Shawin County Volunteer Search and Rescue.org, ccvsar.org. Uh, right there is a join link on the menu, and you can click on that link and and get information, but they've got to take uh, two online FEMA classes called ICS 100 and ICS 700. And you have to take first aid CPR, and those are the requirements to join. After that, we do all the training in-house after that. Um, and we have a whole academy program that people go through. This is one of the classes in that academy, is this medical training. If you're not outdoorsy and, or you're, you're older and you don't have the physical endurance to go hiking on the trails, we need other help. Um, you know, we need base camp support, people operating radios, people doing mapping, putting, you know, we, when we go on a mission, we're not just talking the radio, we're putting in accordance on the map, where the teams are, what areas they've searched. Um, there's a bunch of documentation that goes into search planning. And so there are, you know, people that have, you know, th th that are good organizational minds and, and, and intelligent people, that is a very useful skill in here. Then we also, we're a business, we're a nonprofit business. So there is a lot of things from behind the scenes that keep us working in the field. You know, our treasurer, um, you know, <laughs> things like that. People doing fundraisers, um, people doing community outreach. Those people don't necessarily have to be ones that hike in the, hike in the woods. 
uh, we need people getting out there and helping us in those back office environment jobs and in the outreach program because that's one of our big mission statements is the outreach. Sure. As far as financial support, we, you know, we've got a couple ways to do that. You can go to our Facebook page, uh, facebook.com forward slash CCVSAR, and right there on our phone page, like us, follow us. We'll, you know, we're posting stuff every month about things we're doing and, and, and safety tips and stuff like that. But there's a donate link right there. Click that donate link and, and you can link, you know, donate to us. Um, another way is on our website. There's donation links on the website. Um, if you go to the website, you can choose whether you want your funding to go to our general fund or if you want to specifically support the dog team. We have a canine search and rescue team that does disaster and wilderness and urban searches. We've got dogs that do area search for live people and cadaver or deceased folks. Uh, we have one certified avalanche dog. We've got a lot of, we have trailing dogs. That, so we have a lot of different, we have five dogs on our team right now. Sure. And uh, they're a wonderful resource, but they take training in dollars. So we always like support directly for that program. Tell me ballpark how many calls, missions you cover a year. So between the Sheriff's Office, we're seeing that Chelan County sees about 40 to 60 search and rescue calls per year. This has been a record year last year. I wish I had the number off the top of my head. I can get those to you afterward. Um, but we had a record number last year with COVID and everyone trying to get out in the woods and, and socially distance and not, uh, <laughs> right? They're stuck at home getting cabin fever. Um, the year before that was, was, was busy too. Um, it's going up every year, honestly. We see about two thirds of the calls the sheriff's office goes on, we go on. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're running anywhere from 20 to 40, 50 calls a year. Um, just depends on, you know, what's, what happens. Yeah. And last question is, you know, is there anything that we didn't cover today that you want the public to know about your organization? Try to think for a second. I, I think that, the, the, you know, the awareness that the volunteer search and rescue team is there. Um, we, you know, people see in the news and see a lot of times the fire department, the EMS, right? Yeah. We're another branch of that public safety, the public service, public safety environment. Um, and a lot of stuff that is that behind the scenes that people don't necessarily see. They, you know, they, they see the news clip of the ambulance being of taking off, you know, from the trailhead, but we had, you know, 15 volunteers hiking the patient out for three miles. Um, in a wheeled litter just to get them to the ambulance. Yeah. And so that's a little, you know, we try to be out there on Facebook and, and, and posting those, those stories. Yeah, well, you guys do a great job and thank you for your service to this community. Uh, it's really cool to watch you guys do your training and just be a fly on the wall today. So thanks for inviting me. Yeah, we appreciate you coming out. Um, really looking forward to the footage. I think it's gonna be really nice to, to, to show the story and, and, and you know, whether it is from a public service announcement or perspective, a, a story on your news channel, or just some training materials and stuff for us. Absolutely. Thank you. Great. Well, thanks, Matt. Hi, Stephen Devilbus here, Branch Manager of Beneficial and Home Care. We are an equal opportunity employer and we do not discriminate in employment or services. It is our mission to maximize our clients' physical health and sense of mental well-being while remaining in the comfort of their home. We are currently seeking professional caregivers who share our mission to help our clients live safely and comfortably at home. Call Beneficial and Home Care. Schedule your interview today, 509-663-7900. Come on, I'm a certified technician. I was trained to take good care of you. Nine, I've only been to the dealer. I've been coming here for years. These guys are great. Look around, the BMW, the Jag, the Volvo, they're all waiting for regular service. Well, the BMW has a little computer issue, but that's nothing we can't handle. Come on in. From regular maintenance to computer troubleshooting, trust the Global Car Care technicians with your import, diesel powered or domestic vehicle. Global Car Care, they speak your car's language. Danke schön. Yes, we would all love to have a crystal ball to tell us precisely where the local economy and real estate market is headed in 2021 and in the near future. However, what we do have here at NCW Life Channel are local experts we connect with every week to give us the inside scoop on all you need to know about your home and our local real estate market. Join me each week while we find out what's happening in the greater Wenatchee Valley. I'm your host, Crystal Hughes, and you are watching At Home with NCW Life. It's estimated that one-third of Americans do not have a financial plan. 
At DA Davidson, their advisors are working to change that because they understand the importance of planning for the future. At DA Davidson, they believe in partnering together to build a strategy tailored to your needs. They spend the time and have the knowledge to help keep your financial future on track. Let DA Davidson Financial Advisors of Wenatchee put the strength of advice to work for you. Welcome back. Now let's learn about Avery's Army and find out how you can enlist. Avery's Army is our fundraiser this year. We do every year annually. Typically it's a spaghetti feed silent auction. We're gonna roll one out COVID status. So it's tamales and t-shirts and still a silent auction, but more in like a drive-through sense. Um, our goal is to raise money for Avery Patton, who is a fifth grader up the street at John Newberry Elementary, who was diagnosed, gosh, a couple of years ago with a rare form of pediatric ovarian cancer. She had gone through surgeries that she had to travel to the other side of the country for three times. And then they thought she was in the clear, but it has since not been the case. And so they are having to do more treatments, different medications. So when we contacted the family, since we had to cancel last year's, um, they are still a family very much in need. And so we are trying to fill, fulfill that need. What, so go ahead and introduce and yourself so uh, to me here and tell me what you're doing. And so okay, um, hi. I'm Aria Rumley-Wells. I am the president of the Westside Leadership Club. And right now I am just about to finish up one of the Avery's Army shirts that we actually make here um, from, we have the shirts and we cut the vinyl and then we have this heat press here and we bring it down like so. And it's the, the process is the process was complicated at first it took us a while to figure out but now that we have it down we are ready to make all of it right here at west side wow very slick <laughs> And where can people find, where can they pre-order these? So our links, all of our links are going to be on the West Side, the West Side site, on the West Side Facebook page, on the Leadership Facebook page. Soon we're getting it on the district site. So there's links all over that we can, that, that you can go to, to find these shirts, to find the tamales we're selling, and just to get all of the information once again about our event. And so you're making um, t-shirts and you've got tamales for sale. How is this, um, what are the prices? How can people order and how is it gonna work to pick up? So uh, when you come, there'll be a silent auction and a gift card wall, which we always have, so spend some money. Uh, the tamales and the t-shirts you pre-order online, those links are on Facebook, on our website. Um, they should be on the district Facebook as well. You can go and find them pretty much anywhere. Um, they are for a dozen tamales, it's $20, and those come in chicken, pork, or cream cheese and jalapeno. A half dozen is $10. The t-shirts uh, that you see, the, these are the multicolored ones. These are $18, and the single colored ones are $10, and the t-shirts are all the nice, it, they're nice gilded and soft spun cotton. If you want to, when you go to come pick them up, it's May 6th. 5.30 to 7.30 at Westside, you can just roll through the parking lot. Can you tell me just about the spirit behind the leadership group here, um, taking on a cause every year? Uh, yeah, I think it's, it's our biggest event out of the year. Um, I think it's probably our favorite one. Um, if you've ever done one, and usually the family will come in, it's, it means a lot. And uh, I think that because of the size of the event, um, the amount of uh, planning it takes and then the satisfaction of what we're giving back I think always what drives us especially bringing awareness to the fact that we have a lot of families in our community who have a child who has suffering with cancer and having that battle and uh, there are a lot of them are in need and I don't think we realize that enough 
that's happening right here in our yeah, community. So right. it's not just not just something we see far away or at children's hospital. It's there's a lot of families in our community who need help. Yeah. Okay, Soraya, so tell me about how you got involved in the leadership group and what you're doing here for Avery's Army. Um, so um Sheena's actually my mom, so I've been involved in it since like seventh grade with the spaghetti feed. Um, and I've just hung out after school and now I'm finally um, able to participate in the group. So um, just kind of brought along by my mom and thrown into it and now it's something I really enjoy. Wow. And what do you think about you, your mom being involved in this way uh, in the leadership program at Westside? Um, it's really cool to see her like doing something to influence other students and uh, make a change in the valley. Yeah. Do you feel like she has? Yes. Yeah. Uh, we do lots of stuff in this group uh, for like we have socks for um, that we do for homeless people and we're doing a shoe drive and every year we have the spaghetti feed which makes a big difference in people's lives. Yeah. Why do you feel uh, well, maybe it's passed down, chip off the old block, but why do you feel that it's important to be involved? I mean, you're not making any money off of this, right? Um, yeah, I think um, just making a difference in someone's lives, really, it just to know that you've touched someone's life and made their lives better, um, just it's a good feeling for you, but also um, just um, for them to for yourself to sh to know that you've done something for someone else it just makes you feel good and also it makes the other people that are benefiting from it feel really good yeah absolutely the last thing i wanted to ask about is the family that has generously stepped up to make these tamales can you tell me about so we have a former student a graduate whose uh family owns a food truck who have generously decided that they would only charge us for the at cost price of the tamales. Um, we have another family who every year pays for the food of our spaghetti feeds, so that allows us to give all of uh, everything that's paid for, for tickets for when, we, when they eat, goes directly to the family. Same thing will still apply here. They're willing to cover the cost for the tamales, so they're paying for that first thousand tamales so that all the profits will 100% go to Avery and her family. And that's something that I wanted to have you mentioned because this is a top-down wrap-around whole community charity event where you're getting all of this stuff basically at cost all of the proceeds are going to this family I mean it's it's a win-win right and so our biggest ask this year has been um, typically the students go out into the community and they go to every single business that we can viably get a hold of and ask for donations. But this year, with it being COVID, we didn't want to do that because we don't want to put businesses and, and people in the community in a position like that. And I mean, it's not that they are getting afraid of getting rejected, they get rejected all the time, but uh, that's just a very tricky situation. So our ask is we're asking if businesses or community members who are able to donate items to the auction, if they're willing to do that, that would be phenomenal. And what, how many items are you looking to get? What's the goal? Uh, we don't ever have a goal for items. It's more or less like just, we just intake as much as we can. We, you know, we had some items that were donated to us last year, so we still have all of those, which is nice. Like we have a guitar and an amp. We have like a giant RC vehicle over here. Um, we do always have lots of wine, we got lots of pottery. We usually have lots of ba gift baskets, gift cards, um, things like that. I know we have a river rafting trip for two. Um, we have a uh, horseback riding trip for two. So we have things, and so those are the things we're kind of looking for, just items that people would like to give that we can auction off. We don't ever have a limit or a total. As much money as we can get, that's our goal. Yeah, absolutely, it's a good goal. Uh, how can people, if they want to, through their business, donate an auction item? All they have to do is get a hold of me at the school or just get a hold of the school. It doesn't even matter who you talk to here. Typically, if you just say I want to donate an item, you can just bring it down, email it. If it's a, if it's a gift card or something, you can just email it to us. It doesn't matter. Um, you just need to call Westside. Great. Awesome. Is there anything else you think the community should know about this event uh, that we didn't cover? Um, come spend your money.
That's all we really need. We just need people who can afford to come spend their money, order some tamales, they're delicious, uh, thanks to the Bastida family, um, and uh, order a t-shirt, they're nice, they're awesome to wear. You know, just give us some money. <laughs> That's all I'm asking for. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Sheena, for talking with me today. And uh, kudos to you guys for all that you're doing for not just this, but in years past as well. So thanks. Thank you. Whenever I start to despair about the state of the world, I think about the generations coming up and coming of age right now. Those of us who have lived through decades of endless bloody wars abroad and bloodless cold culture wars here at home. Those of us who watched the Twin Towers fall on 9-11 and then witnessed the solidarity we Americans had in the aftermath turn into mutual loathing and hatred know how fragile unity can be. Those of us who watched in disgust as opportunistic scammers, con men, and politicians drove wedges between we the people know the heartbreak of watching as year after year the rhetoric got more toxic, overtly violent, and cynically opportunistic. I don't think that mine and younger generations are starry-eyed dreamers about the potential future, though. Anyone who has been paying attention over the last 10 years knows that every step towards progress and building a more perfect union is met with backlash. It should not be tolerated, but it can be expected if our history is any indicator of our future. Nevertheless, rebuilding unity must start somewhere, and I think a good place to begin is by establishing mutual respect. And respect is earned when we form positive relationships with one another around a common ground and, on, and for the common good. The path back to a more peaceful society is in part through thousands and thousands and millions of altruistic acts. The selflessness I showcase here in this episode are merely two examples of what we need millions of Americans to do in every small town and medium-sized city and great metropolis in this country. Altruism in action is quite literally common sense. If you'd like to learn more about either of these organizations and support Avery and her family, check out Westside High School on Facebook or get the link to order tamales and t-shirts in the show notes on ncwlife.com. Just find Common Sense under the full episodes tab. This is episode 29. I'm Dominic Bonney. Join me next time for more Common Sense. Getting ready for the boating season is easy with the help of Bombfile Boats and Motors. With marine technology changing fast, the service department stays up to date with the newest developments and factory certifications. They have what it takes to make boating fun and hassle-free for the summer. Then as that garage and driveway fill up in the fall, one call is all it takes to learn about their convenient service and storage packages. Now's the time to call and find out why Washington boaters have been trusting Bombfile Boats and Motors to service, store, and maintain their boats for over 70 years. With PUD rebates will give you money to upgrade your house and reduce your energy footprint. The rebates are real. Visit conservationmakesense.org to learn more. By working together as a community, we can all play a part in promoting children's well-being and strengthening families. April is National Child Abuse Prevention Month. Shalan Douglas Casa is dedicated to supporting families and reducing the risk of child abuse and neglect. Join us in our community-wide pinwheel project and help keep kids safe. If you suspect a child is being abused or neglected, please call 1-866-363-4276. Dr. Wayne Latimer's Chiropractic and Integrative MultiCare specializes in all level of injury care. If you've been injured in an auto accident, on the job, have a sports injury, or a simple fall, call today for a free consultation. They offer a combined multi-care approach with medical, chiropractic, physical therapy, massage, and acupuncture. For relief from long-standing injuries to basic solutions for the weekend warrior, Latimer's Chiropractic Integrative MultiCare is one stop, one location. Hey everyone, Fletcher and Amy Ellington here from Live It Up. 
Join us every week as we answer your questions on health, wealth, and relationships. We're all about you creating a life that you love, so tune in to Live It Up. Hi, I'm Corey with Rose Tractor, and you're watching the NCW Life Channel.